Uh, you know, today the National Oceanic Atmospheric Administration, or NOAA for short, revealed its outlook for the 2024 hurricane season for the Central Pacific. Now, a near normal season has about four or five tropical cyclones. And here to break down this year's prediction is our island weather chief meteorologist, Pete Cajano, back on the couch. How's yeah, it, Pete? Feels good to be back on the couch. Yeah, bro, thank thanks you so for much. Having me. Yeah, thanks for joining us, boss. So, what kind of hurricane season are we expecting this year? Well, NOAA says one to four tropical cyclones will develop or, or move into the uh, Central Pacific, and that's actually below average season. Yeah. So oh. if we get that, that would be certainly good news. Obviously, just any one storm can cause trouble, so we don't want to be uh, we don't want to let our guard down, but yes, we do expect a little bit of a below average season. Wow, that is uh, actually that's some good news. And of course, it runs from uh, June 1st all the way to no November 30th. What was last year's? Do you remember what last year's uh, uh, outlook was? prediction? Yeah, we were above average last year. And, and the reason was we were more of an El Nino, and now we've got a La Nina. And basically, that means we've got cooling waters near the, uh, the uh, equator. And that means that we do have a little bit more wind shear that we're expecting, and that wind shear will uh, allow for these storms to weaken quicker and potentially uh, that would limit the uh, amount of storms we see. I love that. So the wind shear actually helps to break apart those right. um, the, those winds. And of course, we have uh, uh, great uh, two great mountains on Hawaii Island that also- They help. They help big <laughs> yeah. time, Mauna Loa and Mauna Kea. Now, what factors went into this year's prediction? Yeah, it's mainly the La Nina. So sometimes we look at water temperatures. They look at a lot of things to determine uh, how many storms they predict we will see. This year, water temperatures are around normal, so that's not a major issue, at least across the islands. When we talk about water temperatures, that's near Hawaii. We also look at water temperatures near the equator, and that's when the, the El Nino and La Nina uh, come into to play. And since water temperatures are cooling around the equator, that means we're transitioning into a La Nina. And La Nina years generally here across Hawaii mean less tropical cyclones again because of that wind shear. So that would certainly be good news. Yeah, definitely good news. Now, um, I, you know, Pete, please don't mention the, the temperature of the water because we actually have a Yusuf Akamai question oh, okay. <laughs> that is centered around that. All so right. we want to keep that okay. a surprise. We'll have, I know you know the answer, yeah. of course. Now, these cyclones that uh, they, they predict for this year. This is for the Central Pacific. Does this um, uh, count, uh, do they do one for the Eastern Pacific as well? Uh, they do, um, but anything that develops in the Eastern Pacific, if it crosses over into what we call the Central Pacific, it counts for us. That means that it would count for us if it does cross over. Okay, so total is between yeah. one and four. Yeah. Wow, that is really good news. Yeah. So, so is this the gospel truth or uh, can, <laughs> can the outlook be wrong? Uh, the outlook uh, certainly can be wrong. So this is just a prediction. It's just uh, sometimes, unfortunately, I'm wrong when I predict tomorrow and, and these are forecasters or human beings but they're giving chances. So we're, we're talking about the chance of seeing mm -hmm. a below average season. So uh, usually they're pretty good. And I think with this La Nina, kind of the, the overarching factor will limit our development. But certainly we could see more storms than that. And even if we see just one storm, but that storm happens to hit uh, where you're at, that, that's all that matters. So right, absolutely. that's why we want everyone to prepare. And he said uh, there's, uh, they also uh, provide some percentages of, uh, you know, like a 30% chance of near normal levels and then 20% chance of above normal levels. But for the most part, we're in that below normal. So that, again, good news. So yeah. let me ask you one, one bonus question. Okay. Ooh, bonus so, round. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> All the rain that we saw over the past few weeks, has that changed the fire season outlook? Because I know this month is Wildfire uh, Awareness Month. Yeah, it's a good question. Um, so normally... In May, we would be well into our dry season, but obviously hasn't been so dry out there. So mm -hmm. all that rain that we've seen, uh, then forecasters are actually saying that we expect now our fire season to start much later than we normally would see it. So at the earliest, likely midsummer, but maybe more likely late summer before we really get into the, the deep part of that fire season. So yeah, this rain has actually delayed that wow. quite a bit. We do expect drier conditions though for the dry season. So I think we're gonna quickly transition, especially in August, maybe even July to a fire danger. But for now, it's actually gonna be delayed. So that is certainly good news. This is why he's the chief of the <laughs> Pete Kajano, our chief meteorologist from our island weather team. Now, be sure to stay with Island News and Island Life live this hurricane season as we track each storm as it happens you can download our free island weather app for android and apple devices just scan the qr code that's on your screen right now we'll leave it up there for a little bit again for android and apple